It is great to welcome you to Wincrest United Methodist Church worship service. I traditionally say good morning, but I don't know what time it is where you are watching. I'm not even sure it's Sunday, but wherever you are, whoever you are, however you are, it is an honor to be here and worship with you this morning. There are a lot of things going on. We want to make sure that you realize that if you're working with, worshiping with us online, that you are part of our worshiping community. But we also realize there are people that want more tangible hands-on worship. Now, here in San Antonio, we've been maintaining a level of, of COVID exposure and our um, what is positivity rate has been fairly steady, but it's starting to climb. So we have a team together that's looking on protocols and establishing a method that we can get back to face-to-face -face worship, but I need your help. We've got to keep the numbers down. It's just as, as infectious as it's ever been, but when the numbers are down, it's less likely there's going to be someone in worship that is COVID positive. And so as the numbers go up, then, of course, the odds go up that somebody will be in worship that's COVID positive. So we want to keep those numbers down. So please do stay safe, wear your masks, keep social distancing, do all the things that you need to do to keep yourself safe and others safe. Remember, we wear our masks not to protect ourselves, even though we have now. Science has decided that it does help some protect the person wearing the mask, but primarily to protect, to protect those that we come in contact with. Lots going on here. Again, we realize that we are trying to find that balance between worshiping online and worshiping in person. So if you are in the area and can swing by, please do. We'd love to bring you into our sanctuary if you've never been before but also out into our parking lot to my right from this place, uh, be the south side of the, our church, is our pumpkin patch. The pumpkin patch was CDC compliant long before CDC had compliance. Uh, it's a very open space. It's outside, lots of photo opportunities, lots of time to spend with family and friends and meet a few folks that are part of the congregation. If you want to work and help to manage the pumpkin patch and greet folks, there's a place online that you can sign up. Go to our website. Please go to our website and check it out. You'll also find our Windcrest Connection. There's all sorts of different ministries going on. It's on our website. But again, because we realize some people want something they can see, hold, and touch, we do have them here in our gathering place. Also in our gathering place, we have our order of worship. If you want to follow along, if you want to know what songs we're going to sing, you can come by and pick one up, but you can also pick one up online. If giving of your tithes and offerings is a meaningful part of worship, again, you can do that online. You can text uh, to church, and it is, let's see, our online giving is, where did it go? 210-960-8251, and it should be in the comment section in just a moment. So you can text in the amount that you want to give. You can swing by, you can drop it off. You can mail it in. If you want to come by, there's someone here in this space Every Sunday morning from, well, I think Tim gets here a little bit before I do. I'm usually here about 7. He's here a little bit earlier than that. So let's just say for safety's sake, 7 to noon, there's somebody here. Come into our gathering place, drop off your offering. We also want to include you in our boat ministry. We are praying for all the children in our care. If you have a child that you would like to have prayed for, again, we want you to participate. You can text the word BOATS, B-O-A-T-S, to 210 817-7007, 210-817-7007, and we'll send you a picture of one of our boats, but we also have them out in the gathering place. Come by, pick one up. It's got a child's name and their age. If you are not in our system in some form or fashion and we don't know your child and would like to pray for them, then Text the same number, BOATS, B-O-A-T-S, capital B-O-A-T-S, 210-817-7007. In fact, take out your phone and put that number in because we use that number a lot for different ministries going on in our church. And you can text that number directly and it'll come to me and I will respond. So we want you to participate. Lots of ways to participate. Newsletters, pumpkin patch, uh, selfies. We are looking for selfies to include as part of our worship service in the fourth Sunday of Advent. Just tag me in your Facebook comments. Send me an email. You can go online and find my email address. And we want to include those on our fourth Sunday of Advent, which will be the last Sunday before Christmas, if you're not familiar with the church calendar. But not next Sunday. Next Sunday is Communion Sunday. We want you to participate in that as well. So grab some communion elements. 
you want to swing by this church and pick some up so that you're sharing the same elements as the folks uh, more locally, feel free to do that. But we also, the week after that is Veterans Week. We want your pictures, okay? We want pictures of your veterans. We want veterans in your family because we can include those in a collage and include them around worship. So we want to honor our veterans on, veterans, on the Sunday closest to Veterans Day. Lots and lots of ways to make this your church home. You do not have to be physically present in order to participate. Want you to participate. Uh, selfies. Oh, devotions. So we are going to have online devotional material. But again, we want your devotions. So grab a cell phone. Grab a teenager if you don't have one handy. Take a one to two minute video of your faith story of how God has touched you and where God is active in your life. Maybe it's a Christmas story. Maybe it's not directly a Christmas story. Now, those videos tend to be a little bit larger, so send us a text message, an email, and we will send you a link to a Dropbox so that you can put those in there and we can include those. We'll send one out a day for the entire time of Advent. There's one other, and I can't think of what it is. Um, a virtual choir. If you want to sing in a virtual choir, we've got that going on as well. You can also sing in a real choir. Um, I'll think of it later. But it's all online. Go to our website. Like our Facebook page. If you haven't already liked our page, join one of our groups. We've got Sunday school classes that are meeting as well. So those are some of the things that are going on. But we are here primarily to worship. And so that is what we want to do. So I invite you to stand wherever you are as we prepare our hearts, our minds, our souls, and our bodies. If you have prayer concerns, that's the other thing. If you have prayer concerns for this week, Put them in the comment section. That allows the folks that view this worship service a little later on in the week to include them in your prayers, uh, and then it allows us to include them in our prayers as well. But let us stand now and join in singing, Jesus, You Alone. Let us sing. Who is the great King of glory? Seated on high in the heavens, oh, 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 Jesus, you alone. You are the Lord God Almighty, strong in compassion and mercy, oh, oh, oh. Jesus, you alone.
be seated. You notice we have a couple of our praise team uh, that are traditionally here that are out. Uh, there's some sickness in their family, so please do keep them in your prayers. If you have prayer concerns, joy celebrations, again, take out your cell phone, uh, text them to us, put them in the comment section if you're watching online. Uh, even if we don't get them live, uh, they will be part of our worship service as people join us in worship throughout the week. A couple of prayer concerns of Zeta that is headed towards the coast Please keep all of those in the pathway of that storm in your prayers that they be safe. A, a lady getting hip replacement was asked prayers for, and they've uh, been lifted up, so please join that. A, lady, a young lady that's uh, in her 19 years old is critically ill, so please keep that person in your prayers. Gracious and glorious God, you are so worthy. All the earth is singing praises. We come to you because we believe you hear our prayers. We give you thanks that you're not bound by our prayers, that we don't get to decide the merit and value of our prayers, but you, all creation, hears our prayers and receives them, nurtures them. So guide our prayers and help us to pray that which is pleasing in your sight and Shape our prayers as they shape us. We've named some who are experiencing pain and suffering and sickness, and we pray that you heal them as you would heal them. But remind us also of, of Jacob wrestling with, with turmoil and struggle, with what it means to declare you as Lord and being totally healed, yet walking with a limp because of the injury of his hip so being healed doesn't always mean physical healing be with those that respond to our COVID crisis keep them safe but also those who are having to delay needed medical attention so that we can keep beds open we give you thanks that here in San Antonio we were able to maintain a level that we have found a lifestyle that allows us to live within this time. Yet now the numbers are starting to creep back up. We know what we need to do. Give us the courage and strength to do it, to hear your call and claim. We pray for people all over the world as they continue to experience storms and fires and drought and pestilence, as racism continues in countries far and near, as oppression goes unchecked, help us not to turn so far inward that we forget to pray for others and love one another as you have loved us. We pray for our country. We pray for the process that you have helped guide and shape and mold into what it is today. Help us to be faithful disciples, to declare Jesus Christ as Lord, 
and to love one another. We pray for this church, for this congregation, for all who have finished their course from faith and now rest from their labors. We give you thanks that wherever we are, when we come together in worship, near and far, when we break the bread and join in Holy Communion, distant and locally, when your scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we are bound together, bound with those that we know, those that we don't know, the living and those who have died and now rest from their labors. And as we join together, when we pray the prayer that Christ leads us in, we all pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So we continue to give thanks to God as we stand in an attitude of prayer and join in singing this prayer song in the river. There is a river where goodness flows. There is a fountain that drowns sorrows. There is an ocean deeper than fear. The tide is rising and rising. There is a current stirring deep inside. It's overflowing from the heart of God. The flood of heaven crashing over us. The tide is rising and rising and rising. From the heart of God, the flood of heaven crashing over us, the tide is rising and rising. Oh, bursting, bursting, bursting up from the ground, we feel it now. Bursting, bursting up from the ground, yeah, we feel it now. We come alive in the river. We come alive. Please be seated. Gracious God, there is 
so much life that you give to us. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love. Help us to love one another. Help us to love you with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul and all our strength. And help us in loving one another to realize that we are loved we are loved by you with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul and all your strength, but we are also loved by one another. For great God of all people, sometimes it's hard to clear away those distractions. It's hard to be fully present. And so help us in this prayer of confession to get ready to hear to receive your Holy Spirit into our lives. If you would pray with me wherever you are. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. And now may the Holy Spirit touch you and write these words upon your heart. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive all your sin through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. And the people said... Amen. So wherever we are, whoever you are, however you are, we are the forgiven and reconciled, gathered people of God. And so I invite you to open your heart. I invite you to open your doors. I invite you to open your text messaging and your tagging and share God's peace with one another. Peace of Christ be with you. God's peace. God's peace be with you. God's peace be with you. And now I invite you to stand as you are able as we continue in giving thanks to God more than anything. Let us sing. I know if you wanted to, you could wave your hand. Spare me this hard day, you can change your plan. And I know any second now you could take my pain away. But even if you don't, I pray. Help me want the healer more than the healing. Help me want the Savior more than the saving. Help me want the giver more than the giving. Help me want you, Jesus. More than anything You know more than anyone That my flesh is weak So uh, you know I'd give anything For a remedy And I'll ask a thousand more times To set me free today But even if you don't I pray Help me want the healer the healing help me want the savior more than the saving help me want the giver more than the giving help me want you jesus more than anything oh when i'm desperate and my heart is open
You may be seated, and if you will pray with me. God, giver of all that we are and all that we have, help us to remember that all you ask back is a portion. God, not because you need it, but because we need to remember from where all things come. So as we find creative ways to simply get that money to the church, we pray that you would continue to challenge us in creative ways to give. God, we pray that you would use our tithes and our offerings to your will and for your people. Help us, God, in the times where the world would tell us there is not enough to remember that there is so much more than enough. And all you ask is that we share what you gave us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. My heart, my mind, my soul belongs to you. My love, my life, it all. Thank you both very much for sharing that offering with God and with us. The Holy Spirit is indeed using you and is in this place. If it is your tradition to stand for the reading of the gospel, I invite you to do so now as we continue to make our way through the gospel of Matthew. We're, if you're following along in the lectionary, we've skipped just a little bit. The, remember the uh, Pharisees and the uh, Herodians 
challenged God last week or challenged Jesus, uh, God through Jesus last week. And then we skipped the Sadducees uh, came to him. And it's the text that you know where if the woman dies uh, or if the man dies and the woman marries the next brother, then the next brother and the next brother, uh, whose wife will she be in heaven? Um, and Jesus again shuts them down. And then now we come to the Pharisees back to try yet one more time. Uh, so we're now at 22, verse 34. When the Pharisees heard that he had si silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question, What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? And they said to him, The son of David. And he said to them, How is it written then that David, by the Spirit, calls him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus called him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please. Good morning, friends. So you're going to need a couple of things for children's time this morning. I'm going to give you a minute to find those. You're going to need a piece of paper. It doesn't matter what kind of piece of paper. It kind of matters. Make sure mom's okay if you cut it up, but it doesn't matter. Big piece, little piece. You're going to need some scissors and then something to write with. So I'm going to give you just a minute to get some paper, some scissors, and a pen. And if you don't have those right now, the good news is, right, you can go back and watch this at any point and get your things now and just watch along. So paper, scissors, and pen is what we're going to use to talk about the gospel today. The gospel today is really the whole point. Like, it's all there is. It's the reason that the whole Bible exists. And it's one of those answers that you can see at the end of it where literally there's no more questions. Like, you know those kind of answers, right? The kind that when you get them, you know that's all. You now know what you need to know, and so you need to do it. And that's what happens today. So we're going to talk about that with this piece of paper. Now, I want you to take your piece of paper, and I want you to fold it in half. This is a little hard with the microphone in my hand. But you know what? It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't matter, hamburger or hot dog, either way, either way works. But I want you to fold that piece of paper so that you have two sides to that piece of paper, okay? Then I want you to take your scissors, and I want you to start at the folded part. This part's real important. So you're going to start cutting on the fold, like this. And then you have half of a heart. Well, half of a heart doesn't really work, does it? So you have to open it up. And when you open it up, when you open it up, you have a whole heart. And for those of you who hang out with us in Godly Play, this isn't new. But for some grown-ups, it's new. Today's passage centers around the 10 best ways to live. Sometimes grown-ups call, grown call those commandments. And they really all boil down to love God, love people. Not, not half, but whole. Love God, love people. And you'll notice on my love people sign, it doesn't say love people you agree with love people you like, love people who look like you or act like you or that are kind. It just says people, and it says it with a capital P, which you know that means that's all of them. Both sides are important to having a whole heart. Now, that doesn't mean that it's easy, but it does mean that it's what we're called to do, 
in the 10 best ways to live, in the Shema, and in today's gospel where Jesus is asked and he says, love God, love people. Will you pray with me? With your hands together and your head bowed and your eyes closed. Thank you, God, for teaching me to love you and love your people. Help me remember that when I fail, I get to try again. Keep me trying. Thank you for trusting me with your people. Help me to do that with my whole heart. Thank you for Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Christina. As I shared before, uh, please keep uh, some of our ministry team in your prayers. Uh, we got notice early this morning, you know, about sickness in the families and that sort of thing. Uh, but then there's always other things. I want to say a very special thank you to Tim and, and Rob. I forgot to change up my battery pack. Um, it's amazing. There's always something. Have you ever been in a situation, though, when uh, no matter what happened, maybe you worked in a place like this, if something happened, the goal was not just to find out what happened to see if you could keep it from happening again, but was to blame somebody. Somebody had to be held accountable. Somebody had to be challenged or corrected. I think it's one thing to support one another and to try to improve our lives, but I don't think we always need to blame or to judge or to condemn as I shared with you before, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the Herodians, they're looking to blame Jesus. They're looking to get Jesus to say something that will challenge his popularity, hopefully to shift his popularity back towards one of those three groups. Something, catch him saying something that will make him less attractive or maybe dig up some dirt out of his past something that they can share with folks that will discredit him, that will challenge him. Uh, it sounds like the news lately, doesn't it? Always trying to find something to challenge, to discredit, to swing the favor in another direction. And if you notice in the readings, in all of the readings that we talked about, including the reading that we skipped, remember the reading about the divorce and, and resurrection, all that stuff, it wasn't Jesus' profound answers. It was Jesus' questions that challenged those that were challenging Jesus. And not questions of judgment or condemnation, but thought-provoking questions of saying, I know who I am. I know what I believe. I know what God has led me to where are you in this? What would American politics look like if we could only speak about ourselves? We could only share our hopes, our own dreams. We could only share with others who we were based upon our attributes, not about who we are based upon on what we are not. Somebody shared with me a long time ago, when you define yourself by what you are against, you're always at somebody else's mercy for your own identity. You are letting someone else define you. They want to get Jesus. They trap him to get him to say something in order to meet some expectations, to go beyond himself, to say something that will cause people to leave him, to not trust him, to get him to say something wrong. And when he turns and asks them self-evaluation questions, where are you in this? Where do you believe in this? Now, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question, What do you think? Who is the Messiah to you? Now, I don't know about you, 
But one of the questions that I believe they're asking is, I know you believe in Jesus Christ as your Savior, but what does it mean for you to declare him Lord? What does it mean? They're asking Jesus, what does it mean for you to declare you love God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your mind? And he turns the question back. He answers it for them and turns the question back. Who do you say, what do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? And they gave the standard pat answer. Well, the son of David And then he says, but have you ever thought about what that means? Have you ever internalized it? Have you ever asked yourself, who is the Messiah? What does it mean to declare the Messiah Lord? How is it then that David, by the Spirit, calls him Lord? David, who was the anointed one. David, who many believed was the example of the Messiah. How is it that David... Then by the Spirit calls him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? David knew who he was. Who do you say the Messiah is? What does it mean to say, I declare Jesus Christ as my Lord? and not just my Savior. They want to catch Jesus into saying something that will shift his popularity back to them. They will discredit him. Jesus answers from his own experience who he is, not who they are want him to be I love doing weddings I love doing funerals a lot of my friends think that's really weird maybe it is I don't know I like doing weddings and funerals because I get to meet people and people tend to be more honest it's hard to keep up those pretenses when you're under stress And let me tell you, when you are getting married, it is a stressful time. But it's not my stress. And as a lot of my friends have trouble with people that don't deal well with that stress, maybe it's the mother of the bride or the groom, or maybe it's the wedding consultant, or or who knows it is, maybe it's one of the caterers or the vendors. It's not my stress. But I know that people are stressed when they come in, and so oftentimes I will ask them to, tell me about the wedding. How do you see it happening? Do you know, I've never asked that question. They go, well, I don't know. They have some opinion. And one of the things that i found about folks is we love talking about ourselves, don't we? And that's not necessarily a bad thing. If we were more honest and would talk about ourselves more honestly, because you see, a lot of times people will come up and they, we we are afraid we're not going to say the right thing. We're not going to say the appropriate thing. And someone's opinion might change. But if we genuinely just answer honestly, I mean, it's hard to argue with that. How do you see this wedding coming about? Oh, I like to see this. I would love to see that. How do you feel about this? Oh, when I think this or when I see this or when I read this, this is what I believe. This is what I feel. This is who I am. I can't tell you no, it's not. That's who you are. They want Jesus to be someone else. They want Jesus to want to be someone else. They believe that they can trick Jesus into asking him questions because he will try to answer the appropriate answer, not his own personal answer. And Jesus answers for himself. So when this couple came in and I said, we talked about the wedding some and what they wanted to see happen, and I said, any special scriptures that you want in this wedding And the groom looked at me and says, yeah, I want that scripture that says, wives, obey your husband. I thought the bride was going to leave the room when I said, okay, I have no problem with that. 
They were trying to just be funny, I think, and to break the ice. But when I said I have no problem with that, it challenged them. And it challenged their understanding of me being part of that wedding. I said, but let me put it back into context. It's in 1 Peter if you want to look it up. In fact, it's uh, 1 Peter, 2nd chapter, and first part of the 3rd chapter. But you need to read the whole thing. Because while it does say, wives, obey your husbands, and husbands, honor your wives, if you read it back into context, it's pointing to husbands, honor your wives the way Jesus honors the church. Husband loves your wives as Jesus loves the church. Remember in the Gospel of Matthew, we're moving towards the cross. Now you may say, well, preacher, again, you've lost your mind. It's not Easter, it's Christmas. But if you pay attention to the lectionary readings, we will move towards the crucifixion right before we start Advent. Jesus knows what's coming. Jesus knows that the disciples are going to betray him. Jesus knows that they are going to deny him. Jesus knows that they are going to turn their back on him and they are going to run away from him. And even some of those that maybe were at the feeding of the 5,000, even some of those that have shouted, Hosanna, lot Hosanna, even some of those that have said, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, Blessed is the son of David. Even some of those will be the ones that shall crucify him, crucify him. And yet, Jesus doesn't call down hellfire and brimstone, as some of the disciples have suggested earlier. When one of the disciples draws his sword to fight, Jesus tells him to put the sword away. What would it look like, I asked this couple, if you both agreed to love and to cherish each other even when you knew they were about to make the most horrendous mistake since creation? If you said, I've given you all I can give you. I've shared with you all I can share with you. I've done all that I know to do. And yet I know you're still going to deny me. You're going to turn away. You're going to holler, crucify him, crucify him. You're going to turn your back on me and say you never knew me. But I'm not going to give up on you. It's going to cost me everything I have. It's going to cost me everything I've ever owned. It's going to cost me my reputation. It's going to cost me my life. But I will not desert you. I will walk with you through that time. I will stand beside you. And together we will come out on the other side. And we will work our way through this. Would it be hard to obey that person. If you genuinely knew that not only are we called to love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and all our strength, that but God loves you with all God's heart. That God loves you with all God's strength. That God loves you with all God's might with all God's mind, and with God's very soul. They try to trap Jesus. And he says, on these two commandments, hinge everything else. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and all your strength, and Love your neighbor as yourself. What would it look like if we genuinely believed that God loved us that way? And that no matter what we did, 
no matter how big the mistake, no matter what television told us about them or those or who or how, that they too were children of God. Rabbi Jonathan Sachs has a book, and in his book he talks about the Shema. That's the verse that we read. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one. But he also points out that there is no verb in biblical Hebrew for obey. There is no word in biblical Hebrew for obey. With all those commandments, all of those rules, all of those regulations, if we know God loves us, it's not out of obedience that we do those. It's out of gratitude. Shema. Hear. Instead of obey, O Israel, hear. Listen. Pray. Stay focused. Understand. Internalize. The Lord your God loves you and invites you, asks you, encourages you in response to love God back with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all that you are, and to love your neighbor as yourself. Israel's faith is not a faith that values blind obedience, unthinking, unquestioning, Obeying. Israel's faith is one that invites us to hear, to question, to wrestle, to ask those tough questions about ourselves, to explore, to grow. Because if we don't know what we stand for, if we don't know who we are, the world will tell us. The world will try to convince us. The world will try to prove to us that no one can love us like that. That it's impossible. That God can't love us with all God's heart. That God can't love us with all God's mind. That God doesn't love us with all our soul. It's hard. It's hard for us, but with God's help we can do it. And we can love one another. Maybe we need to turn off our TVs and not watch any more advertisement. Maybe we need to take a break from social media. Maybe we need to remember that those people that are posting all of that stuff, God loves them too, and so can we. It's not always easy. They don't always get it right, do they? But neither do we. They don't always know what to do, but neither do we. We can't always agree, can we? but we can still be in community. We can still love one another. Community's hard. Loving one another's hard. We want reasons. We want blame. We want control. Staying in conversation, internal and external, is hard. Madeline Engel, you may have read some of her stuff. She writes a lot of devotional stuff. Writes some pretty good stuff. Her husband was going in for tests, and she kept praying on that long weekend as they waited the biopsy results. She kept praying, don't let it be cancer, don't let it be cancer. Please, God, don't let it be cancer, don't let it be cancer. And a friend of hers told her, you can't pray that way. It's either cancer or it's not cancer. You can't expect God to suspend the universe and change it You can't pray that way. And she thought about it and said, 
I can't live with that. I don't know that God needs to suspend the order of the universe. But I need to know that God loves me. And if we can't pray according to the needs of the heart, if we can't express our deepest longings, then can we express our love? And can we receive God's love for us? I think the heart overrides intellect, she says, and our love insists on praying. Our love insists on us being honest and open and looking at our own heart. And later, after the cancer was pronounced as terminal, she had a brief moment when she wondered if her prayers really had been wasted. And then she decided, and I believe rightly so, that they were not wasted. That prayers are love. And love is never wasted. That the prayers and the love of God helped to sustain her. And that they continued to sustain her. And they will always be there to sustain her. And there may be some unexpected answer to the prayers. And, and it may be that God suspends the universe. And it may be that God doesn't. But that doesn't mean that God's love faltered. It also may be that the prayers are answered unexpectedly somewhere down the road in a way that she wasn't even aware of, but they were never wasted. They're not lost. God holds them in God's outstretched hands. Jesus knew what was coming. He knew what his disciples were going to do. He knew how hard it was to maintain community how to love one another, and how to love God. He knew they were going to fail, but he never stopped loving them. Love is hard. Living in community is hard. Loving God is hard. Loving self is even harder, and loving one another is even harder than that. Hear, O Israel, Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the longings of other people's hearts. Hear the pain and the fear in those ads that we see on TV. Staying in conversation is hard. It's easier to just get angry and say something snitty back. But can we hear? Can we listen? Can we hope? Can we walk through this time hand in hand? With them? Is it worth it? Is it important? Jesus says it is. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second like it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Is it hard? Yes. Is it worth it? Absolutely. Thanks be to God. Amen. So I'd love to have you be this your covenant community. You don't need to make this your covenant community, but if you want to, let us know. If you want to move from observer to participatory and participant and to acknowledge the difficulty in being in community, put it in the comment section. I'll follow up. Send me an email. Go online. Wherever you are, whoever you are, however you are, we are the people of God. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand as you are able as we share in this closing song, I Surrender All. All to Jesus I surrender All to Him
You'd think after six months I'd know how to balance a mic and a mask. And now to the one who does love you with all God's might, with all God's heart, with all God's soul, and all God's strength, so much that God became incarnate in Jesus Christ. And he is able to present you faultless, without blemish, before God's almighty throne. To him be all honor, glory, majesty, power, and dominion, now and forevermore, as you go forth as the people of God. Go forth and love one another. Amen.